This is a Dynajet. The Dynajet is a valved pulse jet engine. They've been in production since around 1950, and they're currently used for um, control line speed flying. Um, also some uh, remote control planes. Now, the Dynajet is a valved engine, which means that it has a mechanical valve in it, which keeps combustion gases from flowing back out of the intake. Unlike a, a valveless engine, this moving part um, is susceptible to wear and tear and uh, has a limited lifespan. Um, typically, a, a good valve um, under good conditions will last about half an hour, but even perfect valve can sometimes fail after about 15 seconds, um, just if you run the engine too lean or um, a little bit too long statically. Now the Dynajet has a few um, parts to it. Up front we have a metering jet which controls how much fuel the engine gets and this goes into a, um, a fuel venturi and uh, this venturi unscrews from the valve head and uh, on the Dynajet it just has uh, two fuel holes that the, uh, the fuel gets sucked out of and uh, turns into a fine spray. And uh, it also has a, a starting air tube and you blow compressed air into that and that flows out and uh, blows it directly over the holes so you get the perfect amount of uh, fuel for starting it. Now the valve head has got this uh, tapered intake here and that leads into uh, ten openings for the valves and each opening is covered by a valve pedal and uh, what happens is when air flows into the intake um, it acts as a venturi and it pulls the fuel up from the fuel tank through the, the fuel venturi itself. Um, they usually call this a, a flow ejector. Um, and when this happens around the, uh, the middle of the intake it, it bursts into a, a fine spray of fuel and then travels through the ten holes um, past the valves and into the combustion chamber and uh, then it burns. Now I'm just going to unscrew this here and uh, now the Dynajet valve head is screwed in place um, it has threading on it and it also has a lock ring and threading on the inside of the combustion chamber and when you screw it in place you have to tighten it down real good and uh, use the lock ring to, uh, to keep it from unscrewing from the, the pressure inside. Now the valve head itself is, has a, a valve retainer plate and this retainer plate just keeps the valves from opening too far and uh, also protects the valves a little bit from the, the heat of the combustion chamber. Um, now this also unscrews and uh, you can take it off and uh, replace the valves and uh, I'm just going to do that right now. The valve itself is just a, a very thin piece of um, six thousandth of an inch thick spring steel and it's important that you use spring steel because it's pretty much the only metal that will work. Um, it's got a spring temper so um, it can take a lot of beating and uh, will last a lot longer than any other metal. And here you can see the, the valve plate and uh, the ten holes going into the valve hood. Now the fins on the Dynajet are uh, basically to uh, reduce the weight. You have these cuts into the intake and uh, that reduces weight while still keeping the same aerodynamic profile because air will still want to flow over it pretty much like it's a, a solid object and uh, that reduces the weight down to about six ounces. Now the tailpipe itself is made from two pieces of uh, 
formed um, stainless steel and uh, basically they form it in a press and weld it together and it's important that um, you don't run the engine for longer than about 30 seconds statically because um, you have these weld seams going down both sides of the engine and um, if you get the engine too hot they can actually split apart um, once the, the engine is moving through the air like on a remote control plane or vehicle um, it will get a lot of cooling air um, also if you're running an engine statically like this um, you should run it on uh, methanol because methanol is um, um, it burns at a lower temperature than uh, gasoline and other uh, oil-based fuels but it also um, actually cools the air um, when it uh, vaporizes so you can actually get the, the valve head to form ice on it um, when you're running methanol um, when you run gasoline the valve head can actually get so hot that you um, burn your fingerprints right off if you try to touch it um, okay so right now I'm just gonna go and uh, get an Allen wrench okay so I have the valve onto the valve plate and the retainer tightened down now, it's important that you don't over tighten the retainer um, you want it to be good and tight but um, not so tight that um, it starts to strip the threading of course okay have the engine all back together and the spark plug wires connected um, one way that you can test to make sure you have the valves um, tightened down properly is if you blow in the end of the tailpipe um, the valves should make like a, a squeaking buzzing noise um, if you have it too tight or too loose they won't um, do this so that's one way that you can tell okay so I decided to run it on some gasoline because it's too humid out and the methanol isn't igniting properly um, what I'm going to do is just uh, start it up now and uh, run it for a few seconds.